question today is about subwoofers, and I'm I'm kind of you know what's the best one to use here for a uh, uh, for a crossover? <laughs> I do like Nipper, and and it comes from um, Imran in Lahore, Pakistan. Wow, that's far away. Uh, what kind of crossover is best for subwoofers, active or passive? We um, I'll get to that in a sec. I don't know how much you can see here. I guess we're sort of crowded in here. This is uh, all kinds of stuff in engineering. It's a collection of cables. Oh, here, this is kind of interesting. This is the original Stellar ugh, prototype. I mean, see how ugly the prototypes are? I mean, this, I don't know how much you can tell, but it, the, can you see the anomaly here in the metalwork? This is like grab a top that's not finished. It's, it's not, I mean, look at that. Um, can you see? <laughs> this thing is a real piece. Yeah. But this is, you know, in engineering, the guys, um, kind of cable, the guys have to, you know, take what they can get when it comes to, um, chassis and to parts. I mean, we, when we build one of these things, um, it, there's probably 10 to 15 prototypes that have to be built before something ever comes to see the light of being a real product. And, and it's a lot of work. Um, and they go through a lot of rigorous testing, which, you know, maybe we'll go into the, the testing lab next and, and show you where that's at. Um, but this is just one of our many, many engineering offices. Um, anyway, let's talk about crossovers and, and subwoofers. The vast majority of crossovers for subwoofers are absolutely active and I think it's best and I'll tell you why. A passive crossover can certainly work but it becomes far more complicated. Well maybe we should back up. Yeah let's back up. I, I, sorry. As an engineer I, I always try and things seem obvious to me and then I realize oh goodness um, I'm talking about something people don't actually have a clue what the hell I'm talking about. So I, I apologize, and, I, and please bear with me if you already know what these are, because apparently he does. Crossovers can be active or passive, meaning that a electronic circuit is included in a crossover or not, and, and an active electronic circuit is what I'm referring to. So a crossover, in its simplest form, is a resistor and a capacitor. Okay, and uh, a, a simple resistor and a capacitor, depending on if the if the resistor feeds the capacitor and the capacitor goes to ground, then what we have is called a high pa uh, low pass filter. Okay, so everything coming in um, through the resistor uh, to a, a, at, at low frequencies goes right through that resistor and the capacitor doesn't do anything to it. So we got a straight shot from DC up to wh whatever the 3 dB down point of that high pass filter is, okay? Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, low pass filter. Sorry, I get mixed up on those two. Um, but as the frequency rises, the, um, uh, the capacitor starts to, uh, it, it's a reactive device, so it starts to pass the signal. And the way we have it configured, if you remember, resistor, s signal, Resistor, capacitor, ground, okay? So as the frequency goes up, now um, that capacitor is, 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 some of the signal is starting to go through the capacitor. And if we go high enough in frequency, all the signal goes through the capacitor straight to ground. So at this point, at the junction of these two, we've got nothing, right? But as the frequency goes down lower, then this reduces and pretty soon we have everything in the capacitor. You could just take it out of the circuit and it wouldn't matter at very low frequencies. Put it back in, as the frequency rises, it, it starts to, to go away. Now the opposite is true. If we take a capacitor and a resistor, then that forms the opposite, right? Now everything above a certain point is going to go through um, and, and you can see how that sort of works, right? Uh, but as, as, as something goes too high or too low, it, it becomes reactive through this capacitor or an inductor, uh, etc. I should probably have some paper to show you how that works. But in any case, that's a simple passive filter. And you can make 
more complex filters passively, you can make, oh, um, single pole, double pole, triple pole. But, uh, and, and each of these poles uh, is showing how, how much faster the slope on the capacitor is. So uh, a, uh, the, the first one that I described is 6 dB per octave. So for every octave of frequency that um, is being reduced, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, amount of reduction is 6 dB. In, that's a single pole filter. In a double pole filter, that amount of reduction for each octave is 12 dB. In a three pole, it's 18 dB. Part of the problem is, and the reason that we would want to modify that and add something like an active circuit, an active element to that, is, is a couple of reasons. If When we do that, we use the same capacitors and resistors, but we add active elements like an op amp or a, an amplifier to this circuit. And when we do that, we can now much easier vary the slope. We can uh, control the type of filter, whether it's a Bessel or a, oh gosh, um, the other names escape me right now, but there's there's all kind of Chevy Chef. Um, there's um, yeah, anyway, there's a number of different types of filters, much easier to implement with an active element in it, and we can do it more accurately with fewer parts. And uh, so there's every reason when we want to have a complex, multi-slope um, uh, uh, filter to use active as opposed to to passive. So that's the reason why most subwoofers have active filters because once we start rolling off the top of the subwoofer, I mean we also roll off the bottom, but I'll tell you about that in a second. Once we start rolling off the top of the subwoofer, meaning the, the top of the low pass filter so that everything below a certain point is passing, which is what you want a sub to do, you want to get out of there pretty quick. Okay, You don't want that subwoofer hanging around into the areas in the domain of the main loudspeaker. So a 6 dB per octave, even a 12 dB per octave filter um, is generally, um, you, you want something at least 12 dB per octave, which is a two slope filter. And the easiest way and the most accurate way to build that and to make it variable, okay, because we, we probably want to vary it, it's much easier to do with an active circuit and much more accurate to do that. So that's kind of why you'd want. The last part I'll tell you about is the bottom end. So woofers, you know, especially servo woofers, you better have a hard cutoff on the high pass filter to make sure that that thing doesn't go down too low and start bottoming out or blapping or any of the other awful things subwoofers can do. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's it. So that's my best advice, active as opposed to passive for your subwoofer crossover. See you, big guy. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.